So in this video, we're going to be comparing two powerful laptops for content creation, whether it's design, 3D, or video. So first up on the left, we have the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR, which as tested is $3,200. Although I'll say there is a brand new version coming out very soon. It's currently in pre-order. So I will link that version in the description of this video. By the time you watch this video, perhaps it's already out and available for purchase. The big difference is that it's an upgrade from the ninth generation Intel processor to the 10th generation version. So that'll be a nice performance boost. On the right side, we have the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which totally stock is $2,800. But to make it match the specifications of the Gigabyte laptop a bit more closely, the as tested version is $3,100 and that was upgrading both the graphics card as well as the CPU. I'll also note that Gigabyte was kind enough to lend me the Aero 17 HDR to do this test, so thank you for lending me that laptop. I was able to check it out in person because they did that, so it's much appreciated. So first up, when it comes to the construction, both of these laptops are made out of machined aluminum, which makes them feel like very high quality machines. A big difference though is that the Gigabyte is 5.5 pounds, while the MacBook Pro is 4.3 pounds, so that is a noticeable difference. I will say though, the Gigabyte Aero 17 is called the Aero 17 because it's a 17 inch laptop. So it is bigger than the MacBook Pro. And it's also really intended to be a desktop replacement. So it's not really a laptop that's designed to be taken around with you everywhere you go. It is a laptop, so it's portable and that's a huge perk. But if, for example, taking this to a coffee shop every single day is what you wanna do, I might recommend their 15 inch model as opposed to the 17 inch model, which will also make it a bit lighter. Another difference on the Gigabyte, if it matters to you, is that there is a much bigger focus on cooling, so more vents, a better fan situation than the comparable MacBook Pro. So essentially, when you're doing really intense work, it should keep the laptop cooler for longer, and laptops that stay nice and cool can work harder for longer periods of time. So that is a perk on the Gigabyte side. A perk on the MacBook Pro side is that it's about half the thickness of the Aero 17 HDR, so very much so a noticeable difference there. Also, I will say that the thinness of the MacBook Pro does come at a cost in terms of things like what ports it offers. So we'll talk about that moving forward. But if you're using these laptops for content creation or even playing games, the screen is obviously a huge deal. So there's some big differences on these two screens. So let's talk about that. First up, the Aero 17 HDR has a 17.3 inch screen as opposed to the MacBook Pro's 16 inch screen. So it's a bit more than one inch bigger. Also, the Aero 17 has greater pixel density, so it has a resolution of 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels in comparison to the MacBook Pro's 3,072 by 1,920 pixels. These are both such high resolution screens that it's gonna be pretty hard to see that. So I don't think that's a really big deal, but the Aero 17 does have more pixels. What is a big deal though, is that the Aero 17 HDR is called HDR because it has high dynamic range imaging. And essentially that allows for a greater dynamic range of luminosity. So what that means is the really brights will seem that much brighter on this screen. Also, Gigabyte sent a video to test the HDR, and I put that on both the MacBook Pro as well as watching it on the Aero 17. And there was a part of that video that had a very bright neon pink. And on the Gigabyte, that pink seemed almost to vibrate. It had so much color saturation. It was really, really impressive. While that video still looked great on the MacBook Pro, that hot pink color on that screen looked like someone took a saturation bar and slid it down about 20%. So it was definitely a noticeable difference there where the Aero 17 just had a really special quality to the colors and the overall intensity of those colors. Another huge difference is the Gigabyte has a matte anti-glare screen while the Apple has a glossy screen. So if you work near windows or sources of light where glare is a problem for you, the Gigabyte screen will probably be a better bet. The perk though to a glossy screen is much like a really high quality photo print on glossy paper. It makes images look really great. So that's probably why Apple still uses a glossy screen in the MacBook Pro at the cost of dealing with some pretty intense glare at times. But I do think you can also purchase anti-glare covers for the MacBook Pro screen, which will also cut down on the cool glossy images. So not the hugest deal if you're willing to put that screen over the MacBook Pro but the anti-glare screen is definitely my preference on the Aero 17. Also two more big differences on the Aero 17. First is that it's X-Rite Pantone certified. So if you use Pantone chips in Adobe programs, for example, it's certified out the box to be very, very color accurate. So that's a huge deal if you're using Pantone colors a lot. Also they're individually factory calibrated, which means each and every single laptop is calibrated to be color accurate, which is a huge deal. 
For example, if you found two of the exact same monitors to buy, one was not factory calibrated and one was, the one that was would be substantially more expensive. So that's actually a really big deal and a huge perk to the Gigabyte Aero 17. I'll also note that the Aero 17 screen much more closely matched my personal monitors that are color calibrated than the MacBook Pro did. So I do see that color accuracy happening in practice as well. And the MacBook Pro display does offer True Tone and True Tone essentially alters the temperature of the display. So how either warm or cool the display looks in terms of color temperature to help it look as color accurate as possible in changing lighting conditions. So essentially the goal there is to keep the whites looking as white as possible, regardless of what the color in your room looks like. So that is definitely a perk on the MacBook side. To me personally, it was hard to say a winner, so to speak, between these two screens because they're both fantastic. But the HDR and the Gigabyte, as well as it having a matte screen, had me personally prefer that screen, especially the HDR on the Aero 17 allowed for some really impressive color saturation. So I thought that was a really cool feature of that particular screen. But like I said, they're both fantastic screens. I don't think you'll be disappointed with either of the screens on these two laptops should you purchase either one. And a huge, huge difference between these two laptops are the ports that come stock. And when I talked about the thinness of the MacBook Pro, part of the reason is it only offers four Thunderbolt 3 USB type C's. So all the inputs are USB type C's or those Thunderbolt 3's, essentially the same thing. And then they do offer a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is appreciated that they did not also take that away. The Gigabyte in contrast has three USB 3.1 type A's. It has a Thunderbolt 3 or USB type C. When it comes to displays, it allows for an HDMI, a display port, or a USB type C. So up to you if you want to use any one of those, it can do them all. It also has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as a 3.5 millimeter microphone input. And then it also has an SD card reader built in, which is really cool if you use SD cards a lot, for example, from a GoPro or your camera, you can just push those right into your laptop and you don't need to buy an adapter. So that's a pretty cool perk. Also has an RJ45 ethernet port if you wanna plug the internet directly into your laptop if your Wi-Fi is slow or having problems, for example. And a downside worth calling out when it comes to the Apple if you want to use anything else other than USB-C, you have to buy these darn dongles. So for example, this USB-C digital AV multi-port adapter, which lets you plug in an HDMI, is $69. So that is a huge, huge fee to get a dongle to plug in something so you can plug your monitor directly into your laptop. Or even more simple things like a USB-C to a USB Type-A, that's $20. Or we talked about the Ethernet RJ45 jack, if you want that on your laptop, that'll be an additional $29. So that's not really great when you buy a very expensive laptop, then you have to buy all these expensive dongles to use all the various devices that you have. But if you choose to go with the MacBook Pro, that's really your only option. This is something that you have to do. So an unfortunate reality of using the MacBook Pro, I appreciate that Apple wants to be future thinking and only include ports of the newest and the greatest sorts of devices but they've been doing this for several years now and all the other devices are still using all sorts of different ports. So it'll probably be quite a few more years before pretty much everything jumps onto the USB-C or whatever comes next. And the CPU is probably the most important part of a laptop when you're doing content creation, whether it's Photoshop to doing 3D rendering. The great thing is you can have the exact same CPU in both these computers. So stock, the Gigabyte has a 2.4 gigahertz, eight core, ninth generation Intel Core i9 processor. Although, like I said, in the description, I'm linking to updated versions that have 10th generation Intel Core i9s. So those will be noticeably faster than the 9th generation versions. So definitely check those out and get the latest and greatest if that's what you want to do. Alternatively, the MacBook Pro comes stock with a 2.3 gigahertz 9th gen Intel Core i9 processor. But for $200 extra, you can upgrade it to match the Gigabyte's CPU exactly. So if you're willing to spend $200, you can have these perform identically. If not, the MacBook Pro's CPU will be marginally slower. And a huge difference, at least stock, between these two laptops is the graphics cards that come available. So the Gigabyte offers a GTX 2070 from NVIDIA with eight gigabytes of memory. Alternatively stock, the MacBook Pro offers an AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of memory. But for $100 extra, you can upgrade that to eight gigabytes. And then something that Apple just did within a couple days of me making this video was add a further upgrade option to a Radeon Pro 5600M, which has eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory, but this upgrade is about a $700 upgrade. 
So it is a substantially, substantially expensive upgrade. And I wasn't able to find benchmarks to compare the 5600M to the 2070. So I'm not going to talk about this a ton, but supposedly this is a 50% upgrade from the 5500M in terms of overall speed and the benchmark speed. So very, very impressive upgrade if you're willing to spend that money. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to compare the Radeon Pro 5500M with the 2070 from NVIDIA because that is the closest price match that we're going to get between these two laptops. Just know there is a better, faster version now available for the Apple if you want to pay that money. But at least when it comes to these particular benchmarks, the graphics card in the Aero 17 HDR was substantially, substantially faster, 141% faster. So if you're looking for the best graphics card that you can get, you're definitely going to want to get the one in the gigabyte, especially if you play video games, then it's not even going to be a slight comparison here, even in things like rendering. So in this particular M render benchmark, the card in the Aero 17 HDR achieved 354 frames per second, while the card in the MacBook Pro achieved 88.1 frames per second. So a 302% increase to the gigabyte. So that is a substantially, substantially faster graphics card and definitely a huge perk that is very, very valuable to have in the Gigabyte over the MacBook Pro. So now I'm going to run over some benchmarks provided by Puget Systems for comparing these two laptops in Adobe programs like Photoshop, Premiere Pro, as well as After Effects. But first up, we have Photoshop. And the thing about Photoshop is that it actually cares much more about the CPU and also the amount of RAM that you have than it does about the graphics card, which is also called the GPU. So when it comes to the processor, both of these laptops have the same processor. So the performance there is going to be identical. The Gigabyte laptop does have Microsoft Azure AI, which helps speed up the processor as well as the graphics card. So that will be a boost to that particular laptop, but I will cover that in just a little bit. But looking at the graphics cards comparison when it comes to Photoshop, basically Photoshop does use the graphics card and it helps it run effects that you could not do if you did not have a graphics card. But even this entire top section, which is a pretty big range in terms of prices of graphics cards, like the GTX 1660 versus the Titan RTX 24 gigabyte, huge price difference and the performance difference is almost non-existent. There are some AMD cards below performing slightly more slowly. And for reference, the MacBook Pro has an AMD card. But in terms of practical real world use, you're not going to see any real difference here. So that's basically a moot point. What really matters is the CPU, which is the same. And then also making sure you have enough RAM to cover the work that you're doing. This particular website does have some recommendations of 32 gigabytes if you're doing 500 megabyte to one gigabyte files or 64 gigabytes plus for much larger documents. So make sure you have enough RAM for your document sizes. And we will cover RAM moving forward in the video as well. But it is important to note up front that it's way, way, way cheaper to upgrade the RAM in the Gigabyte laptop as opposed to the MacBook Pro. That being said, we can move on to the next one, which is Adobe Premiere Pro. So with Adobe Premiere Pro, it also cares much more about the CPU and the RAM than it does about the GPU. And this particular website recommends 64 gigabytes of RAM if you're doing 4K video editing. So that is an important consideration. If you want to save some money on the RAM, you can go the gigabyte route or pay a lot more if you want to use the MacBook Pro. In this case, though, the graphics card does matter a little bit more because there are some very GPU intensive effects that Premiere Pro has. So if you're running lots of those really intensive effects, in that case, the card that is inside the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR should be outperforming the card that is in the MacBook Pro. But that being said, I don't personally ever run those types of effects inside Premiere Pro. So that is a specialized use case. And if you're doing that, you probably know that you're doing that, in which case get the best video card you can to save some time. And last up, we have After Effects. And once again, the CPU and the RAM matter the most. And when it comes to working with After Effects, the previews that you can run inside the tool to preview how your effects are running and looking are all stored in the RAM. So basically the more RAM, the better, because the more RAM that you have, the longer previews you can run. For example, I've used up basically all of my 32 gigabytes of RAM doing previews to the point that my computer almost crashed. So I would definitely recommend at least 32 gigabytes of RAM if you're doing serious after effects work and perhaps even up to 64. And as you can see here in this benchmark, once again, checking out all these different graphics cards, the performance differences are actually fairly minimal. The NVIDIA cards are all outperforming the AMD cards. These bottom three cards are the AMD cards and everything above that 
are the NVIDIA cards, and this is just an Intel integrated graphics card. So obviously it's doing far, far worse because it's not a dedicated GPU. So in this case, if you do want the faster video card, you should probably head the way of the Gigabyte as opposed to the AMD-based MacBook Pro, but this shouldn't matter a ton in terms of the real-world performance of After Effects. And just speaking really quickly about 3D programs, for example, I'm at the Cinema 4D website right now. If you do lots of 3D rendering work, in that case, the graphics card really, really starts to matter a ton, in which case you're going to want to max out the graphics card with that $700 option on the MacBook Pro, or the Gigabyte one should also be totally fine in terms of the use cases there. Basically, when you're working with really complex wireframes inside a program like Cinema 4D, you want to have a really fast graphics card to help you run through those complex wireframes. The graphics card basically serves as its own little CPU helping run calculations, and that's a really big deal when it comes to 3D programs. Also, the GPU matters a lot when it comes to previewing the scenes that you might see inside the actual program itself. Although once you get to the rendering phase, then once again, it's all about the CPU. The faster the CPU, the better. So when it comes to doing 3D modeling, splurge that money for the best graphics card that you can get. It'll probably save you a lot of time as you go through that. But that being said, that is a high level overview of the differences in Adobe programs, as well as a very basic overview for some 3D considerations. But the big difference between these two laptops is that the Gigabyte has that Microsoft Azure AI. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit so you can better understand how that will help the Gigabyte laptop work even faster. So first up, shout out to the website Tweaktown for running these benchmarks. So appreciated there. And we're just going to run through some of the more important ones really fast here. So Cinebench is a benchmark for 3D programs, specifically for Cinema 4D. So when the Azure AI is disabled, there's a score of 12.88. And basically the higher the number, the better. And there's two different variants of the Azure AI on the Gigabyte. One is the green version, which is Edge, and one is the red version, which is Cloud. And the Cloud version essentially communicates with Microsoft to further boost the speeds. So in this case, the AI Edge was a little bit slower than having it disabled entirely, but the AI Cloud, or the red version, was faster. So a noticeable increase in speed when the AI was on for Cinebench. So if you are working in Cinema 4D, this is a perk that'll help the Gigabyte work even faster than the comparable Mac. Also, for example, when it comes to something like CPU, W prime is a measurement of the speed of the CPU. So the lower the number, the better in this case. And while the Azure AI is disabled, they got a score of 164. But for example, with the AI Cloud or the red version enabled, they got a score of 150. So that is a substantial, substantial improvement while that AI is enabled. So even if you are working in programs like Photoshop that rely much more on CPU than the graphics card, in this case, there aren't specific tests showing this, but this should make the Gigabyte quite a bit more quick than the comparable MacBook, even though they have the exact same CPU. So that is a cool thing that is worth calling out here that the Azure AI Edge does give quite a bit of a speed boost to the Gigabyte that make otherwise comparable specifications actually lean towards the Aero 17 in this case. So a really quick section on some of the more technical things when it comes to RAM. So both of these laptops offer 16 gigabytes of RAM stock, although I would recommend for either of them that you upgrade it to 32 if you're doing things like After Effects or 3D work. They both run at the exact same speed of 2,666 megahertz, and they both max out at 64 gigabytes. The huge difference here is the cost to upgrade. So if you want to upgrade the gigabyte to 32 gigabytes of RAM, that's $138. And if you want to do the exact same thing in the MacBook Pro, it's $400. And even to further illustrate, if you want to upgrade to 64 gigabytes, if you're doing some really intense work, that's $340 on the Aero 17. Or if you want to upgrade to 64 gigabytes in the MacBook Pro, that's $800. So more than double the cost to do that exact same thing in the MacBook Pro. Also, a huge difference here is that you cannot upgrade or replace the RAM in your MacBook Pro after purchase. They solder that RAM into the motherboard of the MacBook Pro. You can't do it. The Apple Store will not be able to do it. So that's a huge downside on the MacBook Pro. So make sure you get enough up front because whatever you get from Apple is exactly what you'll have for the rest of that laptop's life. Also, when it comes to the built-in hard drives, the Aero 17 comes with 512 gigabyte stock while the MacBook Pro has a larger one terabyte drive stock, which is great. That being said, the read speed in the Aero 17 is 3,200 megabytes per second, as opposed to the read speed in the MacBook Pro of 2,750 megabytes per second. I also think the write speed is faster in the Aero 17, although I don't have that specific number. 
So doing things like opening up large files or saving large files should both be faster in the arrow while the MacBook Pro stock has more space. So a bit of a trade-off there depending on what matters more to you. Of course, you can upgrade these if you want to. So you can put an additional one terabyte drive into the Gigabyte Arrow. So this isn't an upgrade, it's an actual additional drive you can just put in there. That's $104. Or an additional two terabyte drive or two terabyte SSD would be $300. So in comparison to the MacBook Pro, where it was $300 to upgrade a whole additional drive to the Gigabyte Arrow, so two terabytes plus you still maintain your 512 gigabyte stock drive, a two terabyte upgrade, so you just get two terabytes overall, is $400 on the MacBook Pro. So you're not getting quite the same deal because you're gaining one terabyte as opposed to gaining two terabytes, and you're paying actually $100 more, where the difference in adding an additional terabyte to the Gigabyte Arrow is $104. So for $104 more, you'd have essentially 512 gigabytes less memory than paying the $400 upgrade fee on the MacBook Pro. So substantially, substantially cheaper, once again, to just upgrade the Gigabyte than to upgrade the MacBook Pro. Also, just like the RAM, you cannot upgrade or replace the SSD in the MacBook Pro after purchase. It is soldered into their logic board. So make sure you get what you want up front. And also, if you have problems, like if your drive goes bad, you're in a pretty tough spot. Where on the Gigabyte, it'd be far, far more cheap because they can just pull that SSD out and put a brand new one in there right away. Also, just a really, really fast talk about resale. Apple computers have absolutely fantastic resale value. So if you're looking to buy a laptop and then sell it in a few years, I can't say what the Gigabyte will be worth in a few years, but Apple's hold their value like nothing else I've ever seen when it comes to personal computers. So almost certainly you'll get more money back if you choose to sell this than you would with a Gigabyte. So certainly a perk if you're looking to get as much money back when you're done using laptop as possible. But now on to a conclusion of which one of these two laptops would I get. They're both fantastic laptops when it comes down to it, but they have their own pluses and minuses in terms of what you're getting. I love the overall build quality of the MacBook Pro. It's a fantastically well put together machine. It also has a great keyboard. It has a great trackpad. And it also has OS X, which is an awesome operating system. We didn't talk too much about the differences in the operating systems between these two different laptops, but a lot of content creators do prefer OS X over Windows because it does things like rendering type a bit better. It's also done much better with displays historically and managing multiple displays historically than Windows, but Windows is always trying to catch up and do better. So I've definitely seen the gap on those things close up quite a bit over time. But if you want OS X at all costs, no matter what, then obviously Apple is your only way to go unless you build a Hackintosh, which is its own totally different video topic. So definitely be mindful of what OS you're willing to use and what you want to use for your particular work. Also, certain software programs require certain OSs, so make sure whatever software you use will work in either of these two machines. That being said, Adobe, for example, works fantastically across Windows or Apple. You won't notice any particular difference there. When it comes to the Gigabyte laptop, in contrast, the huge difference to me is A, it comes stock with a much, much better graphics card. It's also going to be much better for gaming, if gaming is something that matters to you. I also did prefer the screen, and of course, the much cheaper upgradability. So for all of those reasons, my personal preference would be to the Gigabyte. And that's mainly because I don't like Apple's business practices when it comes to upgrading or customization. They really lock it down quite a bit, where I actually enjoy upgrading computers. I enjoy replacing parts or trying to make them better. And also I like gaming. So when it comes to gaming, the Gigabyte should pretty much just dominate the MacBook Pro in every aspect because those NVIDIA cards are stunningly good for gaming, where the Radeon Pro, the, even the upgraded 5600M, is much more about workstation use. The cards are just built for slightly different purposes, and the NVIDIA card will definitely win for the gamers out there. But past that, these are both awesome laptops that both have their pros and cons, so it's really up to you to weigh those pros and cons and decide which one matters more to you. And if you do have a personal preference, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Although please do not start a Mac versus PC war in the comment section. I know what you people do. Don't do that here. It doesn't really help anybody. But if you have any feedback or questions or other comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section. Also, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I'll do my best to keep creating new content just like this. But that is it for the video. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I do hope it was helpful. Until the next one.